Please tell me your name and how many years you were married. My name is Nick Sayers. I was married for 45 years. Why collaborative divorce? The short answer to that is it appeared to be less expensive and it appeared to take less time. I believe it was probably half the cost had we litigated and I would suspect that if we had to litigate it might have taken significantly longer than it did. Emotionally, what was collaborative divorce like? I would have to say it was painful, but I suspect less painful than it would have been had we had lawyers at each other's throat running up their bills, causing additional stress for me and for my ex-spouse. So it just seemed like the benefits, not only financially but in terms of less stress, outweighed any of what might be considered a negative on the collaborative process. And the only negative that I can think of is if one of the parties or both of the parties are out for blood, you're not going to get it in the collaborative process. Because you could have very easily said, I want to go to court. I absolutely would have been the party who could have said that. And I have to be honest and say I gave it serious consideration because there were things involved in our divorce that were, that did not make me very happy. And it was very difficult for me to get past that. But I did through the collaborative process. Never would have gotten through it if we had gone to litigation. What would you say to the spouse who's bitter, who says, I want to go to court. I want to get the best settlement possible. What do you say to someone? Like I would that. say if your financial resources are unlimited, have at it because it's going to be much more expensive, it's going to take much more time, and if there are children involved, I don't think it would be helpful for the parents to continue to be at each other's throat through the entire process. I understand bitterness and anger, but the collaborative process is more likely to mitigate some of that than the litigation process is the litigation process is likely to exacerbate. Can you give me an example? Certainly if there are children involved, regardless of whether they're younger or fully adult children, it's going to affect them if their parents continue to be bitter and angry and fighting over everything. Even if there aren't children, there are fellow employees, there are relatives on both sides that will be affected over the long term. If they see the bitterness continue, it will not make for a long-term family relationship. I have, for example, brother-in-law and sister-in-law who I like very much and we've been able to maintain a relationship. Even though I'm no longer married to their sister, but had we been through the bitter process of litigation I doubt that I would continue to get Christmas cards and birthday cards from those people. So it affects more people than just the two parties. Tell me about the first meeting. What was that like, please? The biggest surprise for me was that the therapist ran the show. Uh, I didn't really have any expectations of what it was going to be like. Uh, both attorneys did some talking. Uh, I objected to one of the things that the opposing attorney suggested we do. He quickly agreed with me that that was fine. The mental health facilitator spells out the agenda, lays it out so that there are no surprises as to who's going to say what. You're not constrained in any way in terms of asking questions or objecting, so you can feel free to say whatever you would like. Well, not anything you would like, but anything within reason was, uh, was available to me. Having been through the process, absolutely the most vital component in the process is the mental health professional. They keep things on track, they are scrupulously neutral, and it's a great comfort to know that Somebody is not just looking out for you, but looking out for the whole process. 
How can things get off track in collaborative divorce? And how did the mental health facilitator help bring them back on track? Given that there's going to be a certain amount of anger and bitterness on the part of one or both parties, it's their job to mitigate that anger and bitterness to keep things on track. Can you expand on how that helps, please? Well, I think had I not, had we not used a mental health therapist, that anger and bitterness would have continued to fester in me and would probably be not helpful to my mental and physical health over the long term. So I think it was a great benefit for me to have somebody walk me and my ex-spouse through the whole process from beginning to end. I Help. think that was absolutely essential to the process because all they were, all that person was interested in was the facts. And I had to provide many years worth of income tax returns, uh, pay stubs, credit card numbers, outstanding bills, uh, a lot of work involved in getting all of that information together, particularly when you've been in a house for 25 years and it's gotten buried <laughs> along with other things. Uh, but knowing that they're going to look at all of that information uh, means it's more than likely you're going to be treated fairly. Whereas in litigation you have two financial professionals. Yay. Correct who are likely to be at each other's throat just the way the attorneys would be. So in this way, the financial neutral wasn't like that? Absolutely not. She was only interested in getting all of the information that she needed so she could make the proper judgments about the financial settlement. Was privacy important to you? Meaning the fact that all your financial details wouldn't be open public record? That was a concern. I'm not interested in anybody friends, relatives, fellow employees in knowing what my financial condition is. They can assume whatever they want, but as long as it's sealed with the court, it's pure speculation on their part. Do you think you would have gotten a better deal had you gone to court? There might have been a better deal in the litigation process, but it would have been mitigated by the fact that I would have spent a lot more money in the process. What did you like about the collaborative process? Well, there's always going to be a certain amount of anger in any divorce, and it can manifest itself much more openly in a process where you're going to go through litigation, and your lawyer will no doubt reinforce that anger, whereas in the collaborative process, there's not really any room for anger. If it appears, the facilitator, the mental health facilitator, and the financial professional will mitigate that. And it's great comfort to know that it's not just you and your attorney trying to do what's best for you, but neutral professionals are trying to do what's best, not just for you, but for the other party. Tell me about the team concept. It was very impressive, actually, because it wasn't just your lawyers standing up for you. You had the scrupulously neutral parties standing up for what's right for both parties. And that was, there's a lot of comfort in knowing that you're not in this by yourself and it's not just you and your attorney, but it's you and your attorney and two neutral parties. Meaning? Meaning that you're unlikely to find yourself in a situation where you're treated unfairly. There may be things about the divorce process and settlement that don't make you happy, but there's comfort in knowing that you were treated fairly by all the parties. And it's important for the attorneys. They seem, in my particular case, the opposing attorneys treated each other, treated each other with a lot of respect. And I think that was a good sign at the end of the process that what was done was done best for both parties. Do you think you and your ex-spouse were able to agree on things that maybe you wouldn't have been able to in court? Maybe you would have needed an appraisal for certain items in court? Yes, absolutely. In terms of divvying up household furnishings, for example, we've been in a large house for 20, more than 25 years. 
and there were no issues in dividing up and there was a lot of valuable stuff, but I recognized what was hers. She recognized what was mine and if there was something that was mine that I didn't want it, she was welcome to it. Do you think that would have happened in court? I learned that compromise is essential. Uh, you don't have to compromise your standards. You don't have to compromise the things that are important to you. But not all things are of equal importance and you learn to compromise on those things that are not as important as others. I was not forced to compromise on anything that was important to me. I did compromise on things that were less important. and I think that's a valuable lesson for life, not just for divorce. How did you grow as a person going through collaborative divorce versus litigation? I absolutely did grow through the process. Uh, going into the process, the anger and bitterness that I felt was eating me alive. And going through the process doesn't mean I came out all smiles and roses in my strewn in my path. But a lot of that anger particularly, I'll always have a certain amount of bitterness, but the anger has been largely undone. And I think that has affected not only me, but it's affected my relationship with my children. They have seen the anger and bitterness build over the years, and they now see it lessening. And I think that's been valuable for my relationships with them. How have you grown as a person through this process, if at all? I have definitely grown because I have learned that you have to be willing to accommodate the wishes of other people. It can't always be your way or the highway. Uh, turns out there's got to be room on the highway for all parties involved. And that was probably the most difficult thing for me prior to going through the collaborative process. It was my way or the highway. And I was extremely bitter about what was transpiring and had been transpiring for a number of years. And I have learned that you can't control what other people do. You can only control what you can do for yourself. And that was somewhat of a revelation for me. It helped that I watched the attorneys treat each other well. It helped that the mental health therapist and the professional, the financial professional were obviously scrupulously neutral. Uh, made me realize that this process was going to require me to make some accommodations. And turns out those were very valuable accommodations for me and have continued to be very valuable for me. And now, how are you doing emotionally after the divorce? Better than I was. Not as good as I hope I will be.